beautiful car. How are you, George? Good, how are you? Thank you very much for having us. It was a I mean, great honor to be with you here in Carmel. Is this Carmel? This is Carmel. Legally. This is one of my favorite spots Paradise, uh, in, uh, in California, and so certainly in America. It's just, it's beautiful. Yeah. You know, the golf course, uh, beautiful the, nature, the weather. beautiful weather. So George, I mean, so I don't know where even to start because I mean, you are so successful in everything you have done, but lately it's been a while. So 11 years more or less? It's been 11 years. I can honestly say it's the best 11 years of my life. Uh, Winemaking is a very tough business. I mean, it's a lot of work. A lot of people think it's just like a, this romantic image of like having a winery, Absolutely. sitting down, seeing the sun and then drinking the wine. But it's not anything like that, right? Absolutely. If you get into it, To have a business, you, you, you're going to encounter some serious challenges. So it's a very interesting to me to hear such a level of success in such a short time making wine because obviously one, there's a lot of competition, two, it takes a lot of time to develop the flavors, the, 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 the image of the body that you want to, to offer. So it's a very short time to be so successful. So what's, yeah. what's the key in there? Well, we have three secrets. One is we have my brother who is a co-proprietor with me and he is the winemaker and he's in charge of all of the viticulture as well so yeah. he basically in addition to doing strategy with me he is the sole uh, person responsible for unlocking the potential in the terroir and the second thing we have is we have a jewel of ecological elements this is called by Andrew Chelachev who's one of the first winemakers here in the U.S. The climate and the soil together with the hands that touch it is second to none. And last but not least, we have people. We yeah. have beautiful skills that were drawn to this mountain, we call that mountain, that allowed us to really put it all together. So we had the, the raw materials in the earth and in the climate and a lot of love for this earth. We were able to unlock the potential and bring those ones to the world. And without the people, uh, this would have never happened. So obviously making the link from wine, high quality ingredients, high quality elements, as you put it, like nature and all that. And we're in a Rolls Royce Hunter, which has like the best of every element. Maybe the weather doesn't affect that much making a Rolls Royce. It makes the weather. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But like, um, so we're like the, the both extremes, but Rolls Royce is like a hundred year old company. And uh, so that, that's what surprised me when I read your story about how you, you've been like 10, 11 years, you're like one of the best in the world. And now you're like, compared to a Rolls Royce car, which is the best in the world in cars, that's pretty surprising. And, and not many people have achieved that, I don't think. Well, you know, it's, it's, it, it helps that I'm a, a, a big aficionado of Rolls Royce. I've always dreamt of having a Rolls Royce. And as a kid, I never, I honestly never thought I'd, I would buy one, not that I didn't think I'd be successful. What would be the first memory of Rolls Royce in the movies or something like that? No, the first memory of a Rolls Royce was in Lebanon. Okay. My father, the day I was born, my father closed his biggest deal with um, the wealthiest man in Lebanon at the time. Okay. So I remember several years later, my dad still had a wonderful relationship. He took me to his, it was a palace in the middle of Beirut. Okay. And there was a Bordeaux colored Rolls Royce. Hmm there and I've never seen this kind of car yeah and it was it just drew me you know, <laughs> and it was a phantom so I was like wow you know this is a beautiful car and I didn't know what Rolls Royce was or what it cost or anything but that memory stays with you and uh, one of these days you, you know you get lucky and, and you're able to acquire one and it all comes together can I disagree with you yeah I don't think you get lucky I think you work hard and then you create your luck But you know something, this is a real, this is a million dollar question, you know, they say that success is where, you know, or, or luck is where your preparedness prepares you to be yeah. lucky. So if you're not ready, you're not going to get lucky. But I will tell you that I, I, we work really hard. I've always been a very hard worker. You know, I give the analogy that the sharks don't take the weekends off, so why should we? So exactly. If you're not doing something you're enjoying, here we are driving these cars yeah, on Sunday. Today is Sunday, actually, yeah. we're working. And if, if you're not enjoying uh, what you do, quit. Life's yeah, too short. Exactly. Life's way too short. Obviously, 
being successful not only in the winemaking business but other businesses and you have had the opportunity to drive pretty much every single car i bet i mean i don't know but i'm pretty sure of that what that if you want to say like one quality of a rolls royce that you really really like what would that be you know it's funny you ask me this because i do have just about every other car um, that's considered a luxury car or sports car for me um, definitely the rolls royce has a a statement. I mean, you drive a Phantom, you're, you're making a statement. Yeah. I personally do not drive it for the statement. I, like I said, I thought that I would buy a Rolls Royce when I'm in my 70s. But what happened is I had an, an opportunity to buy a drop head. And I sat in the car and I drove it for a mile. And I turned around and I told the salesperson I'm buying this. I had never <laughs> felt the feeling of driving a Rolls. Everybody thinks a Rolls is not a driver car. Disagree. It is an absolute driver's car. It's a pleasure to actually it's both, right? But like feeling the power is one thing, and then feeling the comfort, the comfort in the back seat is another element of it. But like, yeah, I think I have I had the opportunity to, to drive them, and it's amazing, like the power because they are big, heavy cars, and they move without too much effort. If you 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 feel the quality and everything. You look at the quality and everything. The drive is superb. The comfort is superb. You don't feel any bumps. You you know that this is as good as it can. Yeah. And so you know that I don't know how it could get any better. And so when they come up with a new car like this new car we're driving, I I, I couldn't believe that they could improve on the previous automobile yeah. and this one takes the cake this is an amazing car and actually the dawn and the right are not that old either and they're like for the time they were like the best and again this is even better but yeah this is a different kind of experience i mean so you have a dawn now you were telling me i have a drop head and i have a dawn yeah, yeah. and uh but you enjoy more the dawn i bet huh? i like the dawn as a daily driver but it all depends where you live and what you do like in the vineyard setting driving a convertible uh, in and out here in California, it's, it's, you can't do that. But if you're if you're driving with your family anywhere, if you are going out at night, a special function, nothing beats this car. There's nothing on the planet. I don't care if you pay five million dollars for a sports car. You're not gonna feel the same way as you feel driving this car to an event. So it's a fabulous car and it's comfortable not just for you but for all the people in the car. It doesn't hurt that the car is beautiful. <laughs> yeah. So regardless of how it drives, it's 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 a beautiful, beautiful car. Jokes aside, I, 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 I've never driven. This is the first time I drive the new Phantom. It, it's fabulous. I, I don't know why they don't want to do the drop head anymore. I really wish they did the drop head again. Maybe they want to sell more uh, don't. Don't. If they did this car in a drop head, it would be a no-brainer for me. So I want to make you a very difficult question. I think it's going to be very difficult. Okay. <laughs> what do you... What would be the best thing that you will pick to do? I think they take more or less the same time. Take a sip of the best wine in the world or go zero to 60 in a Rolls Royce. It's about three seconds, right? Um, that's a difficult question. <laughs> Anything that lasts uh, three seconds will always carry a memory. Yeah. And. What's interesting in life is that memory has no concept of time. It stays with you. It stays with you. So I remember drinking, for example, a wine with my dad and taking it one sip. And it was so extraordinary that I remember exactly where we were, what time of the day it was, who was there and what I felt. And it's the same thing with the first time I drove the drop head, for example. I remember mm -hmm. exactly where it was, what time of the day and how it felt. Things like this are very hard to come by in life. And those are moments you will never forget. And you have to embrace them and like, enjoy them, right? And, and they're so different and it's so difficult to compare one, mo one moment to one memory to another. But drinking the best wine in the world, you know, I'm, I'm fortunate to say we make some of the best wine in the world because We've got the highest phenolic content in our wines on the planet. Yeah. Which, in the hands of a winemaker, a good winemaker, it's like taming a Ferrari. Mm -hmm. So this is what our soul of a lion is and what our patrimony is. So I'm a little bit spoiled because I get to experience these wines every time. <laughs> yeah. 
I don't get to experience loving this Phantom well, but you every have time. A, you so have I would say one. I'll pick the Phantom right now. <laughs> okay, that's cool. As you were saying, that when you remember having that sip of really good wine with your father, what was the point where you decided to, to be, go and get into the wine, wine uh, making business? Well, the wine's always been uh, a tradition in the family. My father was a big aficionado. My father's favorite wine was Cabal Blanc. Mm -hmm. and we lived in Paris and we told him one day we'd make him the best wine. But we just also liked the country life. So my, my brother wanted to make wine and it takes a winemaker to make wine. You know, money alone or desire no. or passion yeah. is not enough. You he had so much passion. Yeah, he had, he had so much passion for it. So we decided that if we could find that perfect terroir, that we will get into it. And we did find it. And I think. I mean, we looked hard, don't misunderstand me, but we got lucky because we found it. We could have looked all over the place. I never found it. So you could, you could have started your wine business in maybe in France, but you came to California. Well, first of all, for, for me as, as an immigrant, um, the U.S. in general gave me an opportunity that no other country could have given me, period. So I really enjoyed that. And then... When we saw what was taking, what's happening in California, how those wines are coming together, we were very impressed with the wines in Napa Valley. But when we stumbled over Dow Mountain in Paso Robles, we could not believe that in 50 years of wine history here, no one had discovered or unlocked the potential in this soil. So my yeah, brother and I, Napa became famous, but of nobody, course, yeah. of course, Paso was famous, but not to the same level of Napa. So. When my brother and I discovered this property and we did our analysis, we on paper thought this would make the best Cabernet in California and maybe some of rivals some of the best in the world. So we were just two crazy guys on this mountain, I hope one day you'll get to visit, Hopefully. that believed that we could do it and we could unlock it. And so um, nine years later, nine years later, it took nine years wow. of commitment and love and passion and hard work to really figure out what really comes out of this soil if you apply all the passion, all, all the love, mm -hmm. the best clones in the world, the best density plant, viticulture, the best watering uh, system, so mostly dry farm up to 99% dry farm. Yeah. We could taste things that we had never tasted before and we were flabbergasted. And then we thought, well, maybe we're flabbergasted because it's the fruit of our labor. No pun intended. Yeah. And then when the critics would the come agree with you. and agree, and when the members came and agreed, and when the visitors came and agreed, we felt, wow, how did we get so lucky? Wow. This is why... Again, lucky again. you work for it. <laughs> we work for it, but, you know, it's, it's one yeah, thing... Yeah, all the elements, the, all the stars align in Yes, your, it's or, one thing for yeah. things to work on paper. But yeah. how often do things on paper really uh, no, translate that's, that's, in practice? That's absolutely true. So before we end uh, this little drive, I have to switch languages because hablas muy bien español. Me encanta el español. Sí. Y tienes muchos amigos en el mundo hispano también, ¿no? Eh, sí, claro. En México, en Argentina, y en, en Argentina. Chile, en España, y en, Argentina, en Venezuela. Pero en Argentina principalmente fue que aprendiste español. Uh, la verdad, yo aprendí el español con mis amigos de Argentina, porque soy un jugador de polo sí. y todos los jugadores hablan contigo, con, con, con ellos en español. Tenías que entender. Y yo no comprendo nada, pero yo hablo español, era la francés muy bien, sí. entonces eh, las palabras son casi casi mismas. Sí. Y cuando fui a Argentina aprendí un poquito más. Y ahora mi español está un poquito como broken. Tenemos que practicar. Para, sí, sí, sí. sí ojalá que un día va a pasar mucho tiempo en, en, en Latin America, en, en México, en Argentina. Porque me gusta la gente, me gusta el corazón, me gusta Eso la, manera de, la manera de sí. vivir, los sí. sentimientos que la gente tiene. Que, eh, unfortunately, no, 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 no encuentra aquí sí, se está perdiendo este eso. tipo de gente. Yeah. Bueno, aquí en California, Tú sabes, sí. esto, era, esto era parte de México. Sí. Todavía sí. queda un poco sí. de México. Sí. Especialmente bueno, el sur. Exacto. 
Thank you very much. It was Thank a you. pleasure. Thank and you. now we enjoy the car, and later on we're going to enjoy your wine at dinner, right? I look forward to that. That's going to be excellent. I'm Thank really you. happy Thank for you. that. Thank, Thank you. you.